Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about multi-tenants application and how we can get the correct tenant when we want to retrieve data from database. There is a lot of other courses, videos talking about how to handle the tenants, but here I'm going to address some issues that you need to be careful about it. So here I have a simple application. If I want to check the DB context here, so usually in all the courses or articles, there is one tenant ID that is injected here in the constructor. So usually you have a tenant provider as a service, a scope service, because it should be per request. So what is the goal here? The goal is per request, you need to know what is the current tenant and then get the data based on that tenant, right? So here is the tenant provider. And then we set this tenant ID. In onmodel creating method in the DB context, we are checking if tenant ID is not null, then set query filter for the student. Okay, we have a simple model here that entity a student that contains, for example, ID name and tenant ID. Very simple and straightforward. Usually it's better to have a query filter based on the tenant. So we don't need to care about all of queries in our application. So we have the query filter. So we are sure that every time that we have a different tenants, there is always a where clause in our queries that set the tenants in the queries, right? Nice. So that's the DB context. Uh, and we have this service tenant provider that only contains one property called tenant ID. In the other videos, you can see that they are injecting IHTTP context accessor and then get the tenants from the query or headers or whatever. But I believe that IHTTP context accessor is not safe because HTTP context is not threat safe. So always there is a chance to have some kind of concurrency issues. If there is two requests coming to your application, maybe the HTTP context updated and you are getting wrong tenant ID, okay? I prefer to use the service here with only one property, but I prefer to use middleware. Middleware, I think, is the safest way to get the tenant's ID and set it to the, that tenant provider. We are talking about the request. So all of these services should add to the dependency injection as a, a scope, right? Here we have app DB context. If you are using the signature for adding the DB context, by default is adding by the add scope. So here we can see the lifetime, but default value is a scope. So no need to add it. So default lifetime is a scope for the DB context. It means created per request. And then this tenant provider also I've added as a add a scope. So what we have in our middleware, what we want to do is every time that is a request coming to our pipeline, we get the tenants and then set it to the this tenant provider tenants ID. In the provider, in the, the middleware, I'm injecting this service as a scope service. And then simply, I get tenants ID from the query string. Here, I want to send the tenants ID as a query string. Maybe you want to get it from the request header or even get it from access token claims. Whatever you want, it's easy. You can do everything here and then just get the tenants ID and set it here in the tenants provider that tenant ID. Because it's the scope service, it will keep this tenant ID value for all the request lifetime. Okay, so here we are setting the tenants ID and then we pass it to the DB context. All good. And here we have one API a simple API for getting the students, but we want to get only that students that belongs to this tenant, the current tenants that we are injecting to the request. I think this get a student async, if you check the code here, is just a student that to list because we already set query filter. Okay, let me run the project and see how it works. Okay project is running. I want to call that API from the postman. I have a student and then I set the tenants ID one, two, three. 
Okay, so let's call API. Okay, I have two students here. That tenant ID is one, two, three. Let's check the query, the generated query by the entity framework. You can see that there is one select, select the columns from students where tenant ID is based on this EF filter, that the value is one to three. This, uh, the where clause is added by default by the entity framework because here we add query filter or the tenant ID. What's the point? Very important point that maybe many developers don't care about it is this method on model creating is run and execute only once per your application. No matter you're creating or adding DB context as a single tone or using the DB context pool or I don't know, transient, a scope, whatever. It's run and execute only once per application lifetime. What's the point about it? Because entity framework trying to cache all the entity mapping for the entity framework. It's a heavy operation if they wanted to run every time that you are touching your AppDB context, it takes time. So they prefer to just running once and cache everything. So what I mean is if I put one breakpoint here, it should hit only once. So let me run the project again and let's see. Okay, project is running and here I'm calling the, this is the first request. I run the application and this is the first time that our DB context needs to be initialized. So this breakpoint is hit here, right? So and tenant ID is one to three. Okay, and then if I continue, it works. But next time, there is no breakpoint hit here, right? If I change the tenant's ID, no matter. There is no breakpoint here hit. So the point exactly is here. On model creating, execute only once. So the very bad practice is here, if we want to put some condition, it's very bad for the entity framework, okay? So for example, if I want to, uh, because the, the first time I put the tenant ID as a one to three, right? So this if was true, and then we uh, set query filter, the global query filter for all the queries on the student. But here, if I want to set it as a null or even remove the tenant's ID from the student, in the our middleware, we will get null because there is no tenant's ID in the query. Okay, so let me run the API again. So here is our middleware that it's null because there is no tenants in the query and it would work fine because you see that this tenant ID is null. We can see that this the generated query is saying that where tenant ID is null. All good so far. But what happened if the first request, there is no tenant ID and actually tenant ID is null. And then this if in the DB context won't be true. So there is no query filter set on the student. So let's run the application again and let's see because this is the issue that you need to be very careful about your backend API because you're working with different tenants and you need to take care. Okay, so let me call the API without any tenants. So here, okay, let me just continue. And here tenant ID is not. So this if, will not be true and then pass. So here we are getting all the students in our database. We expected that because the tenant's ID is null, we are assuming that we need to get only the last one because the tenant's ID is null. And the worst part here, even, even in the second request, if you are setting the tenant ID or incoming request contain the tenant ID. For example, I set one to three. 
and the middleware let me put the breakpoint here if i call the api and then see the tenant id yes it's one two three but the point is the generated query here there is no query filter or there is no where clause added to our query we expected that now maybe the first request there wasn't any tenants but now i'm passing the tenant id why not is here because of the entity framework when it captures on model creating it doesn't expect that okay there is a query filter on a student because the first one the first try we didn't put query filter because this this condition wasn't true right this is very important one that you need to know on model creating execute only once per your application lifetime so what we can do we need to remove all the condition in our all model creating so i have to remove it and then just we say put query filter on tenants no matter it's null it's in the queries or whatever we just set the query filter based on the incoming tenants id so here if i run the api again okay and let's reproduce the steps I send an API without the tenants. I get the null here, the correct one, because I'm sending the null. And also query that is generated by EF is the correct where clause. It's adding tenant ID is null. And also, again, if I put one, two, three, yeah, the query is correct, right? That's the point. So maybe you say, okay, sometimes I need to get all the students regarding if it's the tenants null or the other values, I need to get all the students, right? So in the entity framework, it's possible to ignore all query filters that you are set in the some entities. For example, here I have another, this method is simply just a student that to list but i have another method that get all the students so here there is one method on the entities that you can say ignore query filters you can use it in different scenarios because usually when you have for example is deleted on your tables sometimes in your admin panels you need to ignore that is deleted filter to get maybe the admin wants to you know update is deleted records and put it back right so you can use the ignore query filters so in the student for example if i want to uh, do it correctly i can get the tenant provider here provider and yes we can say provider tenant provider and maybe we can say if tenant provider is the tenant id is null just for testing we go for getting all the students here okay all the students and let me put the list of students like this student so we can say if it's null and then go for getting student by the tenants get student okay we are checking if the incoming tenants id is null maybe it means that you need to get all the students it depends on your logic maybe you are putting some flags on the api give me all the students or just let it be based on the tenants okay if i run the project again and the first one we are getting only tenants for this one two three okay it's coming and then if i send the tenants now should be all the student in the database right and there is no where clause added here because we already ignore the query filter right 
The reason for this video, I wanted to make you sure that you are caring about these issues. The first issue was not using IHTTP context accessor because it's not thread safe. If I want to prove that, if you inject the HTTP accessor, okay, and here. So, so we can do something like this if we have one public or one method here, like void get tenants. And then here we can say like tenants HTTP HTTP context uh, request dot query example something right this HTTP context on the HTTP accessor is not thread safe and we need to take care of it so what is the is not null here the point is here this HTTP context you can see in the interface the .NET team put this comment here this interface should be used with caution it relies on the async lock which can have negative performance impact on the async operation and also create some dependency on ambient state so even regarding to that one that is not thread safe it's affect your performance as well so why not i mean for me i don't want to take this risk maybe currently application is working fine but in some kind of a special uh, situation our application doesn't work especially for this reason because it's not trade safe there is some mismatching data when you i am using the, the http context so why not just using the simple uh, middleware and then just get the tenant's ID, right? The second point was about not putting the any condition in our unmodel creating because it executes only once in our application lifetime, right? So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for your time.